Conservative Party splits deepen over the Prime Minister's Rwanda plan ahead of the crucial vote this week. The former Immigration Minister has taken aim at Rishi Sunak, saying he could not give him his support. Our disagreement is on this issue, but it is an absolutely totemic one to the future of the Conservative Party and to the public, and I don't believe this bill will work. Also today, a mother's charged with manslaughter over the death of her four sons in a house fire in South London. The UN warns Gaza's on the brink of collapse as Israel's bombarding of the enclave continues unabated and... A scare for the reigning champions Manchester City in the Premier League. time again, an issue that the Prime Minister has staked his future on. His controversial Rwanda policy is crucial to his plan to make it happen. And now emergency legislation is ready to satisfy the Supreme Court, who ruled the proposals unlawful. But his former immigration minister, who resigned only last week having worked on it, says it's destined to fail. I don't believe this bill will work. I think it will lead to a, a, a range of legal claims which will bog down our scheme and will not create the deterrent that he and I set out to achieve. The bill states that the judgment of Parliament is that the Republic of Rwanda is a safe country and that every decision maker must treat it as such. But the Home Secretary James cleverly openly says that he's unable to make a statement that the provisions of the bill are compatible with the Convention rights. It has split the Conservative Party. More Liberal MPs say it undermines the courts and goes too far while those on the right say it doesn't go far enough and won't work, an assessment this cabinet minister disagrees with. There are many lawyers and indeed people who looked closely um, at how our migration system works who completely affirm the strength and robustness of this legislation. It ensures that no court can say that Rwanda is unsafe. It ensures that many of the reasons that have been used to prevent people being deported in the past will no longer apply. The Conservative Party being divided in this way is no new thing. It has dominated our political landscape for years now. The Labour say it is at the country's detriment. I actually don't take any joy from the fact that the government is in complete and utter chaos. We need a government that is focused on the future of the country. But Rishi Sunak and the Tory party are only interested in their own future, and Britain deserves much better than that. While Downing Street looks ready for the festive period, the Prime Minister won't be in any mood to celebrate just yet, as he prepares for a big week that's coming. And she have is here. I mean, even before we get to Tuesday's vote, the next 24 hours look pretty tricky for the Prime Minister. Yeah, as you know, things can get more difficult. He's going to be at the COVID inquiry, facing questions about what happened during the pandemic. That's the inquiry where we've seen former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, we've seen former Health Secretary Matt Hancock, all face very difficult questions, and it will be Rishi Sunak's turn next. He was the Chancellor during that period. Of course, he was responsible and famous for the e to Help Out scheme, which will inevitably face tough questions about. He'll be asked about his position on lockdown too. And while that's going on, there'll be a group of his own MPs who will be sitting to discuss what exactly they're going to do about that legislation. We know for a fact on the right of the party, there is a group that have sought legal advice. They don't believe that legislation is going to work. They are going to be meeting tomorrow to discuss the right strategy, whether or not they're going to be voting against it, abstaining, what exactly they're going to do, they're going to decide then. And it's incredibly difficult for the Prime Minister. Not only is he going to be preparing for that COVID inquiry, he's going to be worried about a significant rebellion, which is being ultimately spearheaded by someone who was once a close ally of his, Robert Jenrick speaking today. They worked closely together. It's a very difficult time for the Prime Minister. He'll be fighting for his reputation going into next week. A challenging week for Richard Sunak. Okay, Sunak, thank you. A mother has been charged.
charged with four counts of manslaughter after her two sets of twin boys were killed in a fire in South London two years ago. The 29-year-old woman has also been charged with child abandonment. Our reporter Natalia Yaker is in a Sutton for us this afternoon. And Natalia, what more do we know? Well, this all dates back two years ago to December the 16th of 2021, when a house fire broke out here in Sutton, killing four young children. Now, two years on, today, the Metropolitan Police announced they have charged their mother, 29-year-old Davika Rose, with manslaughter. Now, the young children were two sets of young twin brothers, Leighton and Logan Hose, who were just three years old at the time. They are the ones pictured in the black tops. And Kyson and Bryson Hose, who were the ones in the blue, they were aged just four at the time. Now, when the fire broke out, 60 firefighters reached the home in under three minutes and tried to rescue the boys. They were given CPR, but sadly died at the hospital later. Now, at the time, their father, Dalton Hove, described them as bright, caring, lovable boys and said that they will forever be in his heart and thought. But as well as manslaughter, Davika Rose has also been charged with child abandonment and tomorrow will appear at Croydon, uh, Croydon Magistrates Court. Okay, Natalia Sutton, um, many thanks indeed. The head of the United Nations has insisted he will not give up in his efforts to achieve a ceasefire in the Israel Gaza war. Antonio Guterres said the decision by the US to block calls for a truce had severely undermined the Security Council's authority. Inside Gaza, the humanitarian situation is continuing to deteriorate, with warnings that a delivery of aid is now on the verge of collapse. Sam Holder reports. War seems no closer to an end in Gaza. The IDF stepping up operations with more force and intensity, according to the Israeli government. No ceasefire here, but calls for it on the international stage continue. Speaking at a conference in Doha, the same city where much of the Hamas leadership resides, the UN General Secretary said the response to the war had undermined the UN's authority and credibility. The situation is fast deteriorating into a catastrophe with potentially irreversible implications for Palestinians as a whole and for peace and security in the region. On Friday, the United States vetoed a UN Security Council resolution calling for a ceasefire, blaming the lack of condemnation of Hamas. Guterres has vowed to keep pushing for that ceasefire, but the messages from Benjamin Netanyahu indicate the opposite. Addressing his cabinet today, the Israeli Prime Minister said fighting will continue even more forcefully until Hamas is eliminated. It means a grim reality on the ground for Gazans, as well as death, hunger, queuing for hours for UN flour, and there are no guarantees. This woman says she's queued every day since Wednesday, but still leaves empty-handed. The UN aid agency for Palestine has warned it is on the brink of collapse in Gaza and has described the situation for people living there as hell on earth. Sam Holder, ITV News. In other news today, and two men and a woman have been arrested on suspicion of murder after a newborn baby's body was found in Ipswich. Police were called to Norwich Road yesterday where the baby was declared dead at the scene. Suffolk police say the death is currently being treated as unexplained and an investigation is underway. McDonald's says it has taken action against a security guard who was filmed mopping the ground where a homeless person was sitting outside the restaurant. The video, which was posted on social media, appears to show the worker wetting the area where the homeless man was camped out with their sleeping bag. McDonald's have apologised. And the judge has ordered the BBC to release thousands of emails relating to the controversial 1995 Panorama interview with Princess Diana. They include messages sent between managers about the reporter Martin Bashir during a two-month period in 2020. The BBC say they accept that mistakes have been made in this case in the past. In the Premier League, and uh, Manchester City have survived a scare against Luton. The champions went to goal down to the underdogs before recovering to win 2-1 and end their four-game run without a victory. Chris Cullen was watching. No wonder Pep Guardiola looks a little nervous. Light years ahead of little Luton on resources. But four games without a win is not what the champions expect. They demanded a reaction and got one. City peppered the Luton goal but couldn't beat keeper Kaminsky. Guardiola must have thought a goal was coming, but it was no laughing matter.
Perhaps it when it came at the other end. A classic smash and grab from the underdogs on the stroke of half time. The champions had gone down again and Pep was not abused. The shock was on until this. Bernardo Silva with the equaliser. And before Luton could steady themselves, City struck again through Jack Grealish. Two goals in less than three minutes. The match turned on its head. City's barren run is over, and that might spell bad news for the three clubs still above them. Chris Scudder, ITV News. Uh, elsewhere, Arsenal are now level on points with Chelsea at the top of the Women's Super League after a superb performance in front of the record crowd. More than 59,000 people watched the game at Emirates Stadium. Arsenal striker Alicia Russo scored twice, uh, with her team taking away a 4-1 victory. Uh, and finally, a new king of the jungle will be crowned later. Three men are left in the running to win I'm a Celebrity after this morning presenter Josie Gibson left the camp last night. Nigel Farage, Sam Thompson and Tony Bentley are in tonight's live final. Good luck to them. Um, I'll be back with the late news after the I'm a Celebrity final uh, at 10.40. Until then, I do hope you enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Goodbye.